we have reached the appointed hour and we have a quorum. We have a quorum. This pay, uh, subcommittee on integrated education has got a quorum, so let's start and let us invite the deputations and also the officials. Uh, members, let's start our meeting. This is an uh, today's item is on the uh, services uh, or the difficulties of implementing integrated education among students with intellectual disability and mental derangement. This group of students has increased in number. This group of students has uh, increased in number. With regard to students with um, intellectual disability, they are those with IQ above 70 but below the mean. Um, these students may have been accepted in mainstream schools. If they are graded as below 70, uh, they would be regarded as uh, moderately or even uh, seriously um, intellectually disabled, they will go to the uh, special schools. But those between 70 to 100 IQ, they are in the mainstream schools and they face learning and difficulties. And there are also uh, students suffering from mental derangement, um, including those with emotional uh, problems. According to the administration's paper, the number of students receiving service from the HA has been increasing over the years. These students are also studying mainly in our mainstream schools. Three years ago, um, the Tong Chung Catholic School had a tragedy. A 17-year-old student jumped to his death at school. And that was shocking. He was suffering from psychosis. His mental illness was not uh, understood by the school nor the teachers. On the um, teacher's day, on a teacher's day, uh, he said something in the school radio which was considered to be impolite to the teachers and the school asked the student to apologize and he was also asked to change his medication arrangement. He had to take medication in front of uh, the, uh, the disciplinary teacher and he was also asked to wrote a letter of sort of uh, repentance, and he therefore he later jumped to his death during uh, the school assembly, and that um, uh, um, caused a very um, serious damage to the family, to his family as well. Now we are concerned about students with mental derangement. Uh, we want to know whether there is adequate support given to them in main mainstream schools. There are six deputations in our midst, and so let us listen to their views before I'll ask the administration to highlight the points in the administration's paper. 
um, let, re let me remind the deputations that your uh, uh, oral or written presentations today are not protected by the LegCo Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Each deputation uh, will be given five minutes since we have more time today. Um, first, uh, Ms. Cheung. Um, of the um, Concord Mutual Aid Club Alliance. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I am a member of the Concord Alliance and started to receive psychiatric treatment uh, starting from uh, junior form. Um, to follow up on Mr. Chung's uh, speech, recently I contacted uh, the uh, parents of Wong Ling Fong and also the community officer who followed up the case. Now, it reflected a very serious problem. How does the school treat students with mental derangement? In fact, recently I heard that they're going to um, conduct a litigation. And uh, uh, the school replied by saying that uh, according to the community officer, the school wanted to be uh, Treating wanted to treat uh, every student equal. A mentally uh, deranged student uh, would be regarded as a normal student, so as to avoid the labeling effect. Uh, that uh, speaks volumes. Under the uh, DDO uh, teaching guidelines, uh, there is indirect discrimination against disability. Uh, everybody is required to achieve the same standard and meet the same requirement. Uh, that The incident has shown that the school has not adopted flexibility in dealing with the individual differences of students. As for Ling Fung's case, when he had a problem the school adopted a medical model to intervene and tried to help the student. When it happened in 2008, it was just a physical uh, issue. Uh, when the student went up uh, to the um, rooftop and asked the teacher whether a stone would uh, drop to the ground uh, within three seconds, and then the teacher immediately reported to the police without the knowledge of Ling Fong and his parents, and he was sent uh, to the um, uh, psychiatric hospital. And he was, uh, you can Im imagine how he was scared. And in fact, the, the young person's right of choice and a right to know uh, was taken away. It revealed a very serious problem. Afterwards, the school. Uh, dealt uh, with him severely, uh, and he um, uh, he spoke something which made teachers unhappy, and the school treated him as a normal student, but that uh, was unreasonable. The medical model. Uh, was uh, indiscriminately used in dealing with um, uh, that the school tried to turn a student suffering from mental derangement uh, into a normal person, and that uh, led to a lot of unfair treatment uh, given to the student. In the primary school, um, the problem has been ignored. There are many students suffering from uh, hyper. Uh, active um, sin disorder, and um, the parents and students are not given adequate uh, assistance. I know a primary school teacher. Uh, the teacher uh, knows that some students started to take medicine starting from age of six, and when a teacher uh, sees that the student is naughty. Then uh, the student, uh, the, the parent is advised to give medication to the student. Uh, if a uh, 
parent is of the view that um, the student should not be given medication, then all the teachers will try to persuade the parent to give medication to the student because, because the student is very naughty at school. Thus, the parent has the parents have a choice. Um, that's the end of my speech. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Chang, and now Mr. Hui, Ms. Hui Wai Chun. My name is Hui Wai Chun, and I'm social worker working on rehabilitation. And my wife is a serving uh, secondary school teacher. I want to focus on students suffering from mental derangement. Integrated education, in fact, should not or does not include these students. They are different from students suffering from uh, intellectual disability, uh, ASD, or uh, hyperactive disorder. Well, whether the, the present approach is adequate to deal with these students is another matter. But for students who are suffering from pressure or many other things and have problems at school. They may have, say, depression or emotional problem. They may even suffer from psychosis. The integrated education policy at present does not include these students. At present, there is no support. There are only guidelines, but the guidelines are interesting. I've asked my wife whether she has read these guidelines, but she said that she told me she hadn't. Probably it would be on the management level. Um, it would be for the management of the school. I was, uh, my wife was told by the school that there, uh, there was a student in the uh, class suffering from depression, and she was not informed for a for a year. Now, uh, now she has been told about it. Is she going to provide any counselling to this uh, to the student? Um, there is no uh, such instruction or indication. And uh, she had no idea as to what uh, depression means and uh, how she is expected uh, to do to support the student and how she is supposed to deal with the uh, student in a class. And uh, all she could do was to talk to the student more. So um, basically, um, is now the HA which will be dealing with that, uh, and that will be dealt with under EC. And there would be psychiatrists uh, providing a psychiatric or counseling service and so on. But then most uh, of the time, the student will be uh, spending uh, his or her time at school. And therefore, um, teaching is very important. Only the school will be able to play a very important role. Yes, I understand the situation, all right. Uh, you will have to provide him with uh, medical support. Yes, that might be necessary. But then, to what extent is the um, HA talking to the school? For example, in the Wang Lingfeng case, uh, as uh, Ms. Zheng and also Dr. Fernando Zheng said, uh, the school did not know how to deal with the case, and you cannot expect uh, the school social worker uh, to be able to deal with it because uh, they have not uh, received any psychiatric training. And even for myself, uh, I don't know how to deal with that. And in the end, I can only tell him that uh, he will have to receive medication, he will have to get treatment and so on. But then uh, there are problems that cannot be resolved by medication. For example, for those uh, with psychosis after taking the medicine, well, in terms of uh, thinking, uh, they would have difficulty following people's uh, speech. They are not like um, their counterparts in mainstream schools, and uh, well, in this case, uh, he has already suspended school for one year, and he has already been lagging behind. And therefore, in the morning, he might not be able to go to school. Like the um, Wang Lingfeng case, initially after he was discharged from hospital, he is not able to go to school in the morning because he will have to sleep in the morning. He can only go to school or attend school in the afternoon. So how is he able to catch up? The school will have to help. And uh, this is the prime years of, uh, for their developments, and uh, the school will have to play a very important role. And as a result, they will have to become school leavers uh, at uh, S4, S5, so you can appreciate the difficulties because uh, they will have difficulties integrating into society and so on. On the other hand, uh, to what extent uh, is there cooperation between the schools and the parents? Because, uh, well, parents might have. Uh, trust uh, in the schools, but then precisely because the school doesn't have uh, any support and doesn't have any 
knowledge about uh, how to deal with these students in the end. Uh, the uh, students are left to fend for themselves. All right, uh, the parents have uh, trusted the school with their children, but then the school doesn't know how to deal with them, and therefore they are treated as if uh, they are normal students, and therefore uh, they might think that, all right, uh, it's just uh, that uh, their academic performance is no uh, good. And But then uh, is like at Wong Ling Fong's uh, case, sometimes they would be admitted to hospital and others would just uh, um, be left uh, to, uh, to their would be left uh, to uh, fend for themselves. So what kind of support would you be providing in terms of financial support, uh, manpower support, and also in terms of uh, knowledge or guidelines and so on? If there is no support at all, then you're actually just uh, leaving the schools, in uh, leaving the students in the schools and allowing them to fend for themselves. Next, uh, Civic Party, Mr. Joshua Lee. Yes, um, I'm Joshua Lee from the Civic Party. With regard to ID students and also uh, MD students, uh, well, there are difficulties in helping them, and the Civic Party has the following comments to make. Well, for students with the above mentioned problems, basically, it's the frontline teachers and also parents who are providing support to them. But then, according to our understanding, most of these uh, frontline teachers do not have any support themselves. How can they, su how can they support the students in, re in turn? In fact, uh, there are different types of students. For example, they have depression, anxiety, and psychosis. They have uh, different uh, symptoms and different needs, and the parents do not know how to deal with them. And uh, teachers, with their very heavy workload, how can they take care of that? And how can they uh, uh, identify these students? That's why the Civic Party is of the view that other than increasing resources for the, stu for the schools to help these uh, students with special education needs, um, we should also increase the, the role to be played by school social workers who are resident at schools and uh, they will have to understand more about uh, the different uh, special education needs of these students and more resources will also have to be given to these social uh, workers to help them including providing counseling services for the students and for their parents so that uh, they'll be able to identify these students at an early stage so that they'll be able to help to adapt to school life. And one of the purposes of education is not just uh, to help these students and parents as well as the teachers so that they will understand and uh, respect uh, students with different abilities. But then very often the administration uh, does not have um, or does not offer adequate support and as a result uh, these students have difficulty uh, integrating into schools in particular, many teachers and uh, fellow students do not understand their situation, and as a result, they might feel excluded, and uh, they are not able to in integrate into the school life, and as a result, uh, they have difficulties um, uh, catching up. And therefore, we believe that uh, we should step up publicity both in the schools and outside the schools other than workshops. You can also make use of different channels, for example, under the, under the um, new um, school uh, curriculum. You can also have OLE other learning experience so that students can be encouraged to help uh, the disav disadvantaged uh, groups around them so that if their awareness uh, is enhanced, then uh, they will know how to deal with these uh, fellow students and then these students will find it easier to adapt to, the, uh, to their school life. And uh, if the schools and uh, communities have a better understanding of these uh, students, then they will find it easier to accept them and then these students will be able to integrate into the society and they'll be able to learn in the mainstream school environment. And when it comes to integrated education, it's um, a very novel idea to have these uh, students integrated into mainstream uh, schools. Of course, uh, this is a very lofty idea. But then, uh, uh, to a certain extent, it also educates uh, the community at large and also students uh, how to um, accept uh, people with different um, uh, aptitudes and abilities. And um, if schools also have these people, if we know how to deal with them, then for these students with SEN, uh, that would be easier uh, for them to uh, integrate into society after graduation. And if we do not know any any such people, then by the time you graduate, if you have uh, colleagues uh, who have these problems or bosses or um, other people with these problems. We can. We are not just uh, talking about helping these students one way. We are actually helping ourselves. I think that would also help de reduce uh, social costs so that if they are able to work and integrate into society, then there will be opportunities available to them. 
so that we can have an inclusive society so that uh, uh, they will find it very difficult to find jobs after graduation. Yes, in the paper submitted by the administration, there are different mechanisms and support services for these uh, students, but then uh, uh, without resource support, uh, uh, the actual situation is quite a far cry from the picture painted uh, by the administration. Without proper resources for the parents and schools, uh, um, um, integrated education will remain an empty uh, talk. So if you just uh, have the lofty idea without uh, the resource support, then um, it simply won't work. It takes two to tangle, and therefore uh, you will have to combine resources uh, with good ideas before you can work. Next, uh, Labour Party, Mr. Steve, uh, Steve Lowe. Well, for um, students with ID and uh, MD, actually we do have uh, a growing number of such students in mainstream schools. In fact, uh, there are some common problems and there are also some uh, different problems. Uh, let's first uh, talk about the common problems. Uh, number one, uh, very often they are bullied. Well, for ID students and also MD students, uh, they have difficulty socializing with others and they also have difficulties uh, interacting with their fellow students and uh, teachers, and as a result, very often they would be the target of bullying. And uh, they are also not able to protect themselves. That's why very often they would be bullied. And also, uh, when they take medication and when they are called upon, when they uh, are given uh, nicknames and uh, negative labels, uh, they have difficulty defending themselves. And uh, with such a stress, um, uh, they will find it uh, more depressing to stay in schools and so on. And therefore, we believe that uh, bullying at schools in particular, uh, when it comes to um, uh, SEN students, uh, one case is one too many. And therefore, uh, the administration must come up with a comprehensive policy in order to eliminate uh, bullying. And also, uh, support for families, as uh, the gentleman just said. Uh, well, for those uh, with uh, MD, uh, if their parents don't know how to deal with them, and if they don't know how to um, support their, their uh, children, then that would be a big problem. Yes, parents might know that uh, their children are SEN kids and uh, they are already subject to a lot of uh, stress. And uh, in terms of uh, parenting and uh, providing guidance to the children, uh, if they don't know how to deal with them, then that, that would become a vicious circle and uh, the conditions of these uh, children would only deteriorate. That's why other than providing a uh, counselling service uh, to the students, uh, there should also be some counselling for their parents and family members. And also uh, on overall research and uh, studies, all right, uh, in the community, the EOC has already conducted a very comprehensive study. I think it's been some 10 years since the first um, introduction of uh, integrated education. It's time for the administration to review the situation so that for students with different disabilities, uh, what their situation is now like. All right, uh, next, uh, turning to students uh, with ID. All right, uh, very often under the existing education system, they will have to take uh, uh, text-based or written examination. But then according to many international studies and researchers, well, stu uh, ID students uh, might um, have special um, aptitudes um, um, in terms of um, artistic and uh, other um, areas. And therefore, in our education system, if we are able to assess them on these uh, different bases, then we might be able to further develop the potential of these students and also ongoing uh, on furthering studies at post-secondary level. All right, uh, we are talking about uh, text-based examinations, and uh, this is unfair to the students uh, with ID, and that would also amount to discrimination. And I hope that uh, the Secretary for Education and many officials you might have heard from uh, parents of these uh, students and also the students themselves, they'd like to pursue studies um, at the post-secondary level, and therefore we should um, offer more IV-like uh, uh, programs uh, for them so that they'll be able to pursue uh, post-secondary or tertiary education. And also, uh, there are different reasons uh, for uh, psychotic students. It's not just about the individuals. We're talking about the education system, their family, environment, and even poverty, uh, and also uh, school bullying. So all these uh, could be um, uh, could attribute uh, to uh, psychosis um, uh, suffered by students. And therefore, do you understand the reasons and how uh, these students should be dealt with? Are you able to identify and um, interfere in the early stage? And if you can intervene um, early, then the situation might um, not deteriorate uh, that quickly. So um, we may not 
have had uh, the tragedy of uh, Ling Fong. And also, I'm sure the Education Bureau is aware of that. Um, well, uh, since uh, September this year, we've already had four cases of student suicide. I think this is a very serious situation, warranting more concern and attention. I hope that the, the um, EB will conduct um, a comprehensive uh, survey on mental health so that we'll know or understand the needs of students and uh, we should also come up with a mental health policy so that uh, both um, within and outside schools uh, we can do a bit more and there should also be more public education. Well, for SEN students, um, they are not a problem themselves. In fact, uh, they might have special needs but then they are after all human beings and they should be accepted in, in the community. We hope that the administration should look at this um, as if um, as a right to be protected and defended so that uh, they'll be able to develop their potential in a community. Thank you. All right. Finally, the uh, PTU Professional Teachers Union, Dr. Fong, uh, Dr. Yu Big Yu, Fong Big Yu. Yes, I'm from the PTU. Well, for students uh, with ID uh, entering mainstream schools, uh, it increased uh, from 1,280 in 2000. Uh, nine to uh, 1,690 uh, and increased by some 30 percent. Regrettably, in terms of the resources uh, deployed by the administration, is far from adequate, in particular professional support services. That's why when these students uh, receive integrated education in mainstream schools, they have not been treated uh, fairly. They do not have equal opportunities. First of all, on education psychiatrists or EPs. Well, at present, the EPs well, every year, they can only go to the school about uh, 20 times. So for an EP, he will have to go to about uh, six schools every year. So you can imagine the kind of support that can be given to the individual schools is uh, very minimal. And also what he's expected to do uh, when he goes to a particular school, he will have to uh, conduct assessments um, on the students whether or not they can um, receive integrated education. And uh, it will take several hours uh, for an individual student to be assessed. Uh, and it's not just uh, once, it will take several times. And then he will be able to tell whether or not uh, the student uh, is an SEN student. And he will also have to provide training to the teachers. He will also, ha also have to meet with the parents. He will also have to come up with an assessment mechanism with the schools. He will also have to attend uh, some curriculum meetings uh, at the schools. So his workload is very heavy and um, uh, the work is also very fragmented. So as far as the students are concerned, uh, the support is far from adequate. And if you look at overseas uh, practice, all right, in overseas countries, uh, uh, a psychiatrist, uh, well, the ratio is 1 to 2,000, but then in Hong Kong, it's 1 to one, one to 10,000. So you can imagine what kind of support uh, can they provide to the students. All right, uh, he will have to support the students uh, and teachers and also these uh, schools and parents. So um, by having to take care of so many things, how can he be able to do a good job in any of them? And therefore, we will have to increase or step up training for education psychiatrists and also for psychiatrists uh, they should also um, increase in number because very often when we talk to these children well even if uh, they have been assessed uh, by psychiatrists or psychologists well in the past uh, they used to have to wait for three years now uh, I heard that uh, the um, time, uh, the time, uh, the the uh, duration has been shortened. But then, to what extent have we seen improvements? I think we have to deploy resources uh, to where they are needed instead of just um, sending them to mainstream schools and then we say that all right we'll have uh, several sessions for the teachers and then we would uh, say that uh, all right they have been uh, given support and they're able to provide support to the students. In fact, that is far from adequate. <laughs> As for students with intellectual disability, um, they are sent to mainstream schools as examples of um, integrated education. But these students have difficulties in their learning. Even if they are screened by EPs and they are sent to special schools, uh, suitable for EP, uh, special schools, uh, the parents want them to go to uh, special schools, but when we go to uh, uh, ask the um, Education Bureau, the, it was refused by the Education Bureau, and the EP is even uh, criticized.
because the the student is um, with um, assessing the student with uh, intellectual disability. Now, special schools have more resources than uh, mainstream schools. There are social workers, there are um, and also education uh, psychologists in the special schools. In the main mainstream schools, um, the EPs just visit um, the schools at rare occasions. With students, students with um, intellectual disability who want to go to special schools, but they are refused. There are students with intellectual disability uh, may also have other problems like uh, ASD and um, hyperactive disorder, HD. Um, so it is it may be a multiple disorder situation. And if a student with multiple disorder is in a mainstream school, the teachers will face great pressure. Uh, if I may go on. Yes, please go on. We hope that the administration will allow these schools, these students, to go to special schools. They should consider the interests of the students rather than the um, interests of um, restricting uh, the use of resources. There should be more resources given to support to the teachers. And provide um, more training should be provided to teachers so that they can better care for their students. Thank you, Ms. Fong. And oh, may I thank all the deputations coming to give their valuable views. I think that is a very important point, and I hope that today's meeting um, can be a place for uh, taking the matter up with the administration with regard to people who are suffering from. Uh, students who are suffering from mental disorder, or the, um, students with mental derangement, they shouldn't be included in um, integrated education. They are SEN, uh, special education needs, um, intellectual disability, uh, AD, ASD, uh, physical disorder, eyesight, um, uh, visual disorder, hearing disorder, and speech disorder. Uh, there is nothing related uh, with mental derangement or mental health. Now, that is a bureau paper. I hope the bureau will uh, highlight the main points. But please address my question. If these uh, the, uh, the student with mental derangement is not part of integrated education, then what sort of additional support can they have at school? It seems that it is next to zero. Mr. Young. Now, we have already prepared a paper, and I think there is no need to go into the details of the paper. I think um, it is better to address the question raised by the chairman and also the questions raised by the deputation. A student with mental derangement or with mental disorder, mental illness, our view is this. Um, this may be because of internal or external factors, uh, such as pressure or some uh, or other things. Within uh, within within a certain period of time, he, uh, he is suffering from uh, mental disorder. So the first thing to do is to uh, is for the student to have some kind of medical, uh, some kind of uh, treatment, a, a kind of suitable treatment after professional treatment. If the uh, professional, uh, the, if the medical professional is the view that the student is suitable to go back to normal school life, then the school has the responsibility to care for this student, taking into account the special situation of the student and provide some help. But. Uh, the situation of each student varies. The problems encountered by the students also vary. 
I think uh, the most important thing is to understand the need of the student. He may be uh, dealing with his uh, emotions or dealing with his uh, mental condition under the influence of medication. They are not um, um, about um, special um, education needs and adjustment of pedagogic strategy. I think they need more care, um, more than more understanding, and also more time is needed to spend with the student. And in fact, they are different from students of SEN or SEN students. They need uh, special attention and care within a certain period of time, and there are guidelines for the schools to uh, do that. We encourage the parents of schools and uh, healthcare workers can work together so that the student can adapt um, himself or herself to the situation in the rehabilitation process. Although they are not within the definition of EN, of SEN, the Bureau, to a certain extent, will provide some additional resources. I think in respect of caring for them, um, different parties have to cooperate in order to find out the best way to help them. I just find the answer by the undersecretary strange. Now you say students who have mental, um, who are suffering from mental disorder uh, is different or are different from uh, SEN students. But in fact, each kind of SEN student has different needs vis-à-vis uh, uh, -vis other students with uh, other SEN students. With regard to students with mental disorder, it seems that you think there is a fundamental difference between uh, this group of students and those uh, under the uh, definition of SEN uh, students. You mention uh, for a certain period of time, but mental derangement may not be just for a short period of time. S say, me uh, people suffering from mental disorder have to take medicine. They may have to be hospitalized, and therefore their study may be interrupted. And because of the influence of medicine, um, their learning will be affected, or their mode of learning will be affected. In fact, they are similar to SEN students. Obviously, these students with mental derangement or with mental disorder have special needs. So on what basis do you come to a decision that students with mental health problem, uh, with mental health uh, problems are different from SEN students, and why they do not need the support as um, those you have given to the SEN students? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the f uh, fundamental issue is what sort of pedagogic adjustment should be made and whether this adjustment is long term or whether it is a matter of care, say caring for the uh, mental uh, condition or caring for the um, emotional condition. As for uh, intellectual uh, disability uh, um, or other Asian students, we need more. Um, we need to provide more assistance in terms of um, the uh, in the ped pedagogic aspect. As for students with mental disorder, 
more is needed within the short term to care for emotional fluctuations and also um, interaction with other uh, schoolmates. At present, we have not included students with mental derangement into uh, the uh, category of SEN students. Perhaps I'll give the floor to members first. I don't think you have addressed the question. In fact, I hope you shouldn't uh, take your heels today, and uh, you should adopt an open mind and look at the students with mental derangement. If the students have mental problems, their study uh, is seriously affected. They need additional resources. But unfortunately, with the introduction of SEN, uh, or rather integrated education since 1997, no resources have been given. Is it a mistake? Who is to blame? We don't want to uh, find fault with anybody. But we can see that the number of students with mental derangement is increasing. According to the characters, Oikwan, and also the... Um, According to the uh, Baptist Oikwan and also the uh, educate uh, the IET, it is said that one fifth of the students have symptoms of m medium to serious depression. This is just an a, a survey by by NGOs, and there is also the problem of um, bullying and also um, falling behind in studies. And these have uh, caused a lot of problems for the young person who will one day grow up. I hope that you have an open mind and give some time to our students. Chairman, if I may say a few more words. It's not that I'm just digging my heels. We have an open mind. We are here to listen. We've heard a lot of views. I just try to explain our uh, present policy. And we also agree that within the same classroom, there are students with different needs, and uh, the students should be cared for as far as possible. With regard to mental problem, it is not just limited to students at school. In fact, in the whole community, uh, people suffering from mental disorder, one kind or another, is very common. It's just the difference is only a matter of degree. At school, there are students uh, may have um, different um, problems one way or another. That's not strange because it's the same in the community. Uh, since we have time today, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, I'll ask my uh, colleague to explain further. Perhaps I have not put my point um, eloquently. Um, I think my colleague can further explain why we do not include mental disorder into the category of SEN. I, I think members are willing to listen. We have quite a bit of time today. Uh, Mrs. Wong? No, uh, Ms. Lau. Uh, Dr. Lau. Oui. Well, um, let me supplement a bit on this. Well, when we say that as, uh, well, students uh, have uh, mental derangement, uh, basically we are, um, they are facing difficulties uh, in rehabilitation, and of course, uh, what's needed is a uh, psychiatrist and also uh, healthcare professionals, uh, so that uh, they can uh, be treated with medication, and also what kind of treatment they need, and so on. So that's point number one. Number two, we also noticed that uh, in some cases, well, after they have taken their medication, their conditions will stabilize, and uh, in some cases, they might even be uh, cured. But of course, um, uh, that depends on individual cases and conditions. But then that does happen. But then uh, for autism or ASD and also developmental disorder, well, um, 
there's uh, it there's distinction between the two. But then, uh, for some students, after they have taken their medication uh, or such treatment, would also require long-term education support. Well, at schools. We do have uh, resources available for students uh, with additional education support. And uh, what is being done is that uh, at the schools, we have professional teams, for example, school social workers, um, education psychiatrists, and also dedicated uh, staff, uh, guidance teachers, and so on. They would be looking at the special characteristics of individual school or, or students. Uh, there would be multidisciplinary or cross-disciplinary uh, sessions. So it's not just confined to the schools themselves. Last year, or the HA um, has been working with us in collaboration. And um, we introduce um, a notification mechanism so that uh, the schools will be informed of the um, EC centers, uh, contact person of the HA in individual district or clusters, so that the schools uh, would know who they should contact um, and uh, invite her to attend uh, this multidisciplinary sessions, and there will be very in-depth discussion on the students and their needs, so that uh, special adaptations will be made. For example, it's been mentioned just now. For example, he might need to go to school um, at uh, flexible hours, and uh, there would also have to be special care for the student. And also, in terms of homework, there might also need to be special arrangements. And also, in terms of exams and tests, uh, there would also need to be special arrangements. So all these will be discussed um, at the multidisciplinary sessions. And then for more severe cases or acute cases requiring more resource support, then we can also look at that uh, on a case-by-case -case basis so that um, additional resources uh, can be given to the school uh, to try out uh, new approaches. And then uh, in 2012 and 13, actually, when compared to, well, we have actually given um, a district based uh, training for raw secondary and primary schools on the problem of uh, psychosis. So there's been a territory wide uh, training program for teachers, and uh, we work with. Uh, the Easy Center. So it's a collaboration program with HA, and over 700 sessions have been organized. So that in terms of um, knowledge and understanding, teachers are armed with more knowledge to deal with more complicated cases. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Lau. Any further supplement? If not, then uh, I'll open the floor to members. Well, just now. Well, you actually uh, reminded me of uh, a dozen or so questions. Yes, uh, Mr. Peter Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Well, no one doubts that uh, one out of five uh, might have uh, psychosis uh, or emotional disorder. Well, actually, even if you count the number in the room, there might be a handful of them here. So my personal view is uh, this is nothing new, and yet apparently our systems have not been able to come up with guidelines or policies to deal with these people. Well, I agree with what you said, Chairman, that um, by integrated education for um, the ex mentally ill patients, uh, should they be included? Well, I think they are still students. And as long as they are students, then they should be taken care of under the policy of integrated education. And if at present um, no additional resources have been given for that, then we will have to do it. We will also have to come up with guidelines for teachers as to how they should deal with the situation and what kind of attitude they should adopt in dealing with such students. And the Bureau would also be providing support for the teachers. I don't think any parent or student, when they have to take medication, they'll take the initiative to inform the teachers that I'm taking medication. You don't have to worry about me very often. It's only until after the teacher has noticed that uh, the student might be emotionally disturbed or they might be dozing off in class and uh, they'll pay special attention to the student and then 
they will then find out that uh, they are actually uh, suffering from early stage psychosis. So I think, generally speaking, the teacher will immediately consider whether or not uh, uh, an immediate referral is necessary because on the one hand, he's helping the student and on the other, he's also helping himself. I don't know, maybe Mr. Ip Kin Yun uh, can supplement on this, but then apparently there has been no guideline in this area telling the teachers that uh, what they are supposed to do on the spot. And also, even after the student has been admitted to hospital, or even if uh, they have been suspended from school for a while after they have returned, uh, what should be done about it? What kind of support will be provided by the school to make sure that uh, they'll be able to reintegrate into their classes? And uh, does the Bureau provide any support to the schools so that they'll be treated uh, like uh, normal students and yet they can be given more support in class? So are there such resources available? I hope that the Under Secretary can tell us more about this. But then I'd also like to know a bit more about the following. Does the Bureau or has the Bureau uh, done anything to collect information from the schools, uh, students uh, with uh, depression, uh, students with uh, psychosis, or all right, uh, uh, they have been diagnosed uh, with such problems. Uh, what is what? What are the figures? And Chairman, you also quoted some recent surveys. One out of five students or people are suffering sub from such problems. Is that a true reflection of the reality, or is that a saturated, an exaggerated figure? So, can I get more information from the bureau, under secretary? Well, chairman, I'll ask my colleagues uh, to tell us more about uh, school guidelines and uh, how these students uh, can be supported. All right, if they have been, uh, if they have suspended uh, uh, school for a while, and after their return what will be done about it. All right, apparently it's becoming more prevalent these days uh, to have uh, people suffering from psychosis, probably because of uh, stress and uh, um, busy um, urban life. All right, uh, if you're talking about one in five, actually, uh, we will have to uh, go down the path of integrated education because uh, it's very common for you to no people with such problems. So um, with a class of 35 students, uh, you're actually talking about up to seven students with such problems. All right, teachers are very concerned about their students. Many teachers are very concerned about their students, and very often they would be able to notice um, uh, the students uh, are behaving uh, somewhat differently, and they would try to talk to these students and their parents, and they would find out if they need to um, get medical attention, whether whether they have to consult doctors and so on. So the teachers and the schools will consider these. I'm sure many teachers will be able to do that. But very often, as the chairman just said, so would they be treated um, um, as ha having received or undergoing integrated education all right, uh, after they have taken some medication or after they have uh, um, left classes uh, for a while and then when they come back. So would we treat them as if they were one of the eight types of uh, students requiring special support? Well, by integrated education, well, it's not a problem to integrate them into uh, mainstream schools. But then when it comes to bullying, it's another story. But then as Dr. Lau just said, well, when these students are in the course of uh, rehabilitation, and uh, when psychiatrists or doctors uh, think that uh, they can go back to schools, then uh, uh, different assistance or different support can be provided by the Bureau. Even if they are not uh, classified as uh, students with SEN, but then we also have to take care of these students' special needs, and we also have to take care of these differential abilities of students, then uh, of course that's the duty of the Bureau. Well, for bully bullying, inevitably, even if um, all the students are healthy students, um, there are bound to be 
bullying instances. In particular, if they are students with IDs or MDs, then of course uh, they would be even more vulnerable. And of course, we adopt a zero tolerance approach. Like you, we would not tolerate any bullying incident, bullying incident in schools. And therefore, we do have guidelines for schools. And we have already told uh, the schools to take certain actions uh, if they uh, are aware of such cases. And of course, schools attach a lot of importance to such cases too. And they will try their best uh, to uh, deal with the situation. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Cheung also refers to some actual cases. I'll defer to my colleague. Um, Chairman, co uh, members, well, I'd like to supplement on this. Well, for students with some um, MDs, like all other students, including those uh, with SEN, they also need the schools to help them. And what's most important is, in my view, all right, if they have uh, mental problems, then they will have to receive um, medical treatment. And we are just trying to make sure that they'll be able to reintegrate into the school's environment. We have to be more accommodating. We have to be more flexible. We have to be more caring. That's precisely what these students need. For example, if a student um, attending school, well, because of their health condition, they will have to um, stay away from classes for a while, and then they will have to go back to school, when they have to readapt to school life, then the school concerned if parents are willing to discuss with the school authorities, then actually they can um, go back to schools on a progressive manner. Because uh, for the students concerned, the most important thing is to take, is to take care of their uh, uh, health. And if they have to go back to school uh, full swing, all of a sudden, then uh, that would also put a lot of stress on them. That's why all along we've been encouraging all parents that uh, if they uh, identify any problems, if they have any needs, they could always approach the schools so that they can sort things out through better communication. They'll be able to come up with a better way to help the student concerned to integrate into school life. For example, it's like uh, students with SEN, they might have uh, problems that are more serious, and as a result, uh, they will have to be taken out uh, from the school environment so that they will be uh, able to receive um, um, counseling service, or they might also have to go to special schools to, to undergo short term training. And then, after they have gone back to the school under the existing mechanism, uh, we will talk to the schools uh, concerned to decide whether or not uh, they'll be go back to all the classes right away, uh, like their normal uh, uh, fellow students, or should that be done in a progressive manner? For example, um, for the first uh, few weeks, uh, they'll just uh, attend uh, classes uh, for two hours in the morning and so on, so that after they have uh, adapted to school life, then they'll be able to go back to school full time. It really depends on the needs of the individual student. We cannot adopt a broad brush approach and say that this must be the arrangement. Through communication, through discussion, we believe um, the um, arrangement will be more uh, suitable to the student. If the student's situation is very complicated and, need, and additional resources is needed, then the Education Bureau uh, may consider providing short-term resources to the school so as to help the students, and there will be a review on a regular basis. Chairman, just now uh, they mentioned this. Can you provide us any number? And uh, Do we have to guess? What do you mean? What kind of numbers? How many uh, suspected uh, or confirmed men, uh, students with mental derangement? If at all possible, uh, the Education Bureau does make records of the uh, details so that we have a better understanding of the numbers and, and uh, also to provide the necessary help. 
but we have to get the consent of the parents before we obtain the data. We do have some data in this regard, but according to the numbers we have got, we believe uh, they are on the low side. Some parents may not want to provide the details to the schools. Um, we will continue to uh, promote uh, the message. We will talk to the parents. When we introduce integrated education program, many parents are worried that they are told they they will be told that their student that their children have special education needs. But after many years of promotion and public education, uh, more parents are willing to come forward to inform the school that their children have special education needs. Um, through more publicity and education and discussion, if parents are convinced that the information will be helpful in respect of getting the school to be more caring and more accommodating to the students, I believe parents will be more willing to come forward to tell the schools. Can you be more direct? What numbers do you have? You've spoken at length. You you ask for consent of parents. Chairman, we ask for numbers. We don't ask for individual cases. We don't ask for names. Just give us the numbers. You don't need the consent of parents, I think. Oh, thank you, Chairman. If we uh, do have the numbers and if we get the consent of the parents, then uh, whoa, whoa have the data. In our database, those defined by healthcare personnel as having mental problems such as uh, psychosis, obsessive compulsive reaction, and depression. Now, the numbers are not comprehensive. We can only know with the consent of parents. We have about, in total, a hundred or so, a hundred and thirty something. Now that's exceptionally low. Those receiving uh, treatment from the HA, 17,000 below the age of 18, they are all students. You only have 130. Um, sorry, it's a time for members to ask questions. If we have time, we will give um, you the floor. You mentioned that under the um, HA there are seven centers looking after young people suffering from psychosis. These students, these young people below the age of 18 must be at school. Uh, and also uh, Dr. Lau mentioned the um, reporting arrangement. There must be close liaison between these uh, psychosis center and the schools. If the schools don't have the information, uh, don't have the information, how can they help the students? You mentioned 130. That's extraordinarily low. How can that be? Um, chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I may add a little bit further, according to the HA Hospital Authority, and in 2012-13, uh, 17,000 or so students uh, receiving service from the psychiatric service of the HA. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, if, especially those from the HA. The number includes all those who have received psychiatric service, then they are people below age 18, starting from zero, zero to 18. Uh, no, mm, I believe in no one uh, zero age. Um, as for um, 
the um, students at school, they are primary and secondary school students. So uh, we are comparing apples with oranges. As for the 17,000, they are those who receive service from the psychiatric uh, service of the HA. They are uh, preschool uh, children. They will not appear in our number. Even if they are school age um, children and young person, uh, the number includes autistics, uh, ADHD students, uh, mild um, mental problem um, students with behavioral problems. If uh, parents are concerned, they can ask. The, they can send their children to the HA uh, doctors and seek advice from the doctors. That's the reason for the difference. Perhaps the uh, HA representative can speak on that. I speak on behalf of the HA concerning the uh, situation faced by the uh, child and adolescent psychiatric services. Now we have handled more than 20,000 patients below the age of 18. We don't know how many are in primary schools, how many are in secondary school. They are below age 18. More than 20,000 are attending our child and adolescent psychiatric services. Chairman, if you may uh, uh, permit, uh, we, uh, let me speak on the different categories. Um, and whether such dis uh, categories of disorders and whether the disorders are different fundamentally. Uh, according to our statistics, the majority are suffering from HD and also ASD. Uh, together with ID and uh, dyslexia, they account for about 60% of our patients. And they are within the category of SENs. And for the remaining 30% or so, um, they, they are suffering from emotional or behavioral problems, psychosis, and uh, drug abuse. And um, do they need special, do they have special education needs? They certainly, um, if they suffer from mental uh, from a mental problem, they really need the help of the school in adapting to um, their school life. And should they be included in the SEN category? And the chairman asked whether there is a fundamental difference concerning those that are not included in the SEN definition, as said by Mr. Young, the Under Secretary, the illness um, or the illnesses wax and wane. To give you an example or to give you an analogy, it's just like a young person um, suffering from diabetes. Um, the child uh, can receive normal education if the child is not suffering from the disorder, but once there is an onset of the disorder, then he'll have to take medication and he has to to be uh, away from school for a short period of time. Should they be included um, as um, a category under SEN that is open to discussion? I think Mr. Chung Kok Chu is very familiar with the needs of those suffering from mental disorder. The most important thing is to, to identify the children as early as possible, early intervention and early treatment, and the uh, child can then be brought back to school and be integrated into normal education. And so um, the um, students with mental disorder are a bit different from SEN. Say, for example, those from suffering from H, those with HD or ASD, the majority of them have long-term education needs, they need long-term assistance, um, and they are different from students with mental disorder. Say for those suffering from psychosis, within our seven clusters, 
we have already set up a liaison person. Or uh, the liaison person um, will uh, con uh, con will talk to the schools. Apart from providing uh, assistance to the schools, um, the uh, teachers or the EP can contact our liaison person, and we will provide immediate help. We will have uh, we will intervene as early as possible. We believe we are working in the right direction, but do are we having have we put in enough effort? Uh, that is something open to discussion. Um, if you look at mental disorder broadly, then it will be about one in five or one in six is suffering from mental disorder. And should we do it this way? Uh, should um, there be uh, intervention by doctors and nurses in every case? Another point is the students is um, does the students uh, has the problem of stigmatization when they are back to school, whether it's for uh, the uh, uh, for children or for adults, they suffer uh, the same. If they are included in the definition of SEN, what will be the implication on stigmatization? You really need to consider that seriously. Thank you. Thank you for your advice and also your uh, information, Doctor. Now, you say that 60% of them have already been categorized within the SEN definition. Now, you have seven um, children, child and adolescent psychiatric services center. Or psychosis center. Uh, do you have the numbers of uh, young people suffering with psychosis? No, we we don't have it at hand. Uh, we are handling about one thousand three hundred new psychosis cases. On the whole, that's not adequate. The HA has to uh, deal with two thousand to three thousand. New serious mental illnesses, and um, we really need to consider the matter further. Chung Kok, Mr. Chung Kok Chiu, yes, I I have a follow up. Yes, please be quick because two members are in the line. How long the discussion? Uh, say, um, assuming that there are seventeen thousand young people. Not to say twenty thousand, seventeen thousand is a, or rather, one thousand seven hundred is a big number. One hundred and thirty out of one thousand seven hundred is just ten percent or less than ten percent. So there are many hidden cases. And the students don't know where to turn to in order to seek help. I think the Education Bureau should do more with the teachers so that they can identify the students earlier. The SWD can give us some advice. All right, um, well, you have uh, the seven districts, Dr. Chong. So in the seven clusters, uh, you have this networking. And um, in the 18 administrative districts, we also have uh, the um, integrated um, um, mental health uh, centers. So if they can work together, that would be a lot better. So the Under Secretary told us just now that uh, recently you did a territory-wide psychosis um, training session for schools. Well, my view is if you can do it um, at the district level, that would be the best because you immediately be able to talk to the psychiatrists and uh, social workers on the ground. And then if they have any problems, they will immediately be able to contact you. And that would also help the teachers to identify the hidden cases. They might be um, uh, consulting the doctors, but then uh, they try to hide them, and they would not be telling the schools about this. Next, um, Mr. Lang Yu Chong, 
Well, thank you, Chairman. When we talk about integrated education, obviously we are talking about students uh, with um, IDs and also uh, students uh, with MDs. So they have been placed at um, uh, mainstream schools uh, receiving integrated education. Well, even if they just um, account for a small number of our students in schools, but then once they are placed at um, mainstream classes, if they have any behavioral or mental problems, then the whole class uh, will be affected. So their whole, and it's not just um, the whole class that will be affected. Well, however hard they try, when compared to their normal um, fellow students, uh, their progress would be somewhat slow. So when they are placed at um, mainstream schools, um, if you can afford it, then of course uh, you can have uh, group sessions so that teachers or teaching assistants can help them so that uh, they can be given more intensive care in order to help them catch up. Or else uh, they're just wasting their time there. So they're just uh, going through the motion and by the time when it's time, or, uh, and, uh, when it's time for them to leave, they'll just uh, leave schools. And whether or not uh, they've been able to um, benefit um, substantially from that, uh, well, it's doubtful. And um, I think in most cases, it's a waste of the resources, it's a waste of their time. So for those of us who are involved in education, well, when it comes to students uh, with mental derangement, it's very difficult to deal with them. All right, even if you have uh, small groups, well, you will need a lot more manpower. So it's often like a cul de sac. So if you're not able to have small groups, then um, uh, you're not able to help the student concerned. You're actually uh, uh, making the whole class uh, dysfunctional. That's why I've often asked uh, Mr. Young to join our class uh, and I've also asked the bureau director to try it themselves. Just uh, come to one of our classes, see if you can deal with the situation when there are problems. How would you deal with the situation on the spot? Very often nothing can be done about it. The, own, the administration will just be saying that, all right, I've given you extra resources, $15,000 and so on. But then will those be able to help? Well, other than just uh, scratching the surface of it, other than saying that uh, you've already done something about it, uh, you won't be able to see any effect at all. So that's the first point that I like to make. It's a very important point. And second, another problem or another purpose of having integrated education is to avoid the problem of stigmatization because many parents are still having difficulty coping with the fact that their kids have such problems. But then when a parent sent some his kid to a mainstream school, I think uh, even if they try to persist, um, in the end, it just uh, won't work. All right, they might have uh, tried very hard. In the end, they might find out uh, that uh, uh, if they had placed their kid um, in a special school, that might have worked better. So with the differential abilities um, in mainstream schools, uh, the kids uh, might not benefit that much in a mainstream school. There are many reasons why. In some cases, there are there is this shortage of places and some would, sim would simply not admit these students. And um, so the number of places has actu actually uh, shrunken. So uh, in some cases, parents would be prepared to uh, come to terms with it and uh, they might be prepared to send their kids uh, to special schools, but then they might not find a place readily available. So the parents have to be given more assistance. Professional staff are not adequate at these schools. They are not able to offer any assistance. So even if parents are prepared to come to terms with this and uh, allow their kids to go back to special schools, they are not able to do so. So honestly, for the 10 plus years that these uh, children spent at the mainstream schools, it's a waste of resources. It's a waste of their own time. It's also uh, affecting their fellow classmates and uh, students. So something needs to be done about it. Well, you really need to address the problems instead of just uh, coming up with some patchy work or just um, 
doing some lip service. All right, can you be more thorough? Can you be doing things uh, more in depth so that we will really be able to address the problem um, at their roots? Mr. Young, I think Mr. Leung has talked to me on several occasions about this. I do understand this. I can imagine and I can picture that. I understand that uh, Dr. Leung or, or Mr. Leung has first hand experience because he's a professional teacher. Well, talking about integrated education, of course, the purpose is to, all right, um, with professional advice and assessment, if the um, conclusion is that um, the student is. Uh, uh, suitable for mainstream education and uh, with the parents willing, then of course um, they can choose to have their kids enrolled into a mainstream school. Once we accept that uh, this is the right of the child, then what Mr. Leung portrayed just now would um, to different extents uh, happen. So what the administration can do is to make sure that when this sort of situation happens, then number one, the student would be given better care so that he'll be able to benefit from mainstream integrated education. And number two, he must not affect um, the other fellow students in the same class. We do have measures in place, but then are they adequate? And, um, and uh, that's the subject of uh, deliberation by the subcommittee. And um, there are also different comments uh, coming in. But then, uh, how about the figures? Can we be more focused? Well, just now, Mr. Leung was asking about this. Well, for children with mental derangement, as they are not covered by integrated education, generally speaking, there will not be additional resources given to the schools. So even if um, the schools would like to um, have small groups uh, follow up for these students, they are not able to do so. All right. If the parents think that all right, then there are bullying problems and they are not able to catch up. So why don't we just uh, go back to special schools? No, that's not possible. If you have um, MD, you would not go to special schools. But then, uh, as they have um, intellectual disabilities, um, um, would they be eligible? to go back to special schools, all right, if they have they are ID students, then we'll try our best to help them go back to special schools. But then uh, if they have limited um, IQs, so um, their IQ is uh, over 70. Well, stu only students uh, who have IQs below 70 would be regarded as um, ID students, and if they have IQs over 70, then they would be treated uh, as normal students because uh, you cannot expect every student uh, to reach um, IQ 100. So for those above 70, we think that um, they are able to receive um, normal education at mainstream schools, and therefore for those with IQs over 70, they will be arranged uh, to go to uh, mainstream schools. But then uh, for those over, for those under 70, if they want to go back to special schools, we'll help them. I think the emphasis here is do they have a choice? All right, uh, for some students with IDs, and if um, they have uh, moderate uh, intellectual disabilities, and if parents uh, want to place them at uh, mainstream schools, or right, parents uh, do have that right, but then for those who are above um, ID 70, but then if they are not able to catch up in mainstream schools, if they have difficulties, and if they want to go back to special schools for moderate um, uh, intellectual disabilities, they are not able to do so right now. That's the difficulty. That's the dilemma. Well, for the time being, they are not given that choice. So the problem is they are not given this choice. That's precisely what the problem is. Um, Ms. Lee, thank you, Chairman. Well, as professional um, assessors, the child's interests should be the first and foremost. The reason why 
for those with limited um, IQs and those with uh, moderate IDs, why they are now placed at uh, mainstream schools. That's because uh, the environment at mainstream schools in terms of um, social interaction and other um, uh, um, and in terms of acquisition of uh, adaptive uh, life skills, uh, that would be a lot better for them. So only those with serious IDs or with multiple IDs, uh, they'll be placed at special schools. That's the overriding principle. So generally speaking, if a student is, n n is not having any ID, then they will not be placed uh, at special schools. Yes, in terms of uh, support, um, special schools have uh, professional teams and they are able to provide better support for the students. But then in terms of their environment, they also have some constraints. And just now, Chairman and uh, Mr. Fong said that, uh, well, um, the students might also at the same time be suffering from multiple disabilities from time to time. We do see such exceptional cases and uh, in the unfortunate event that uh, the student concerned has limited um, IQ and uh, he might also be suffering from uh, autism. He might also be suffering from HD, hyper um, activity, um, and uh, he might want to benefit uh, from mainstream school, but then uh, uh, the he has uh, experienced a lot of difficulties and if our parents also notice that and uh, if they want their kids uh, to go to special schools then in some exceptional cases uh, they would be arranged to go back to special schools. So we are not very rigid about this. So, this, so it depends on what kind of environment is uh, the best uh, for the student concerned. So we have made such arrangements before. In other words, um, it's not up to the parents to decide. So it's your subjective um, thinking, it's your wishful thinking. You think that that's the best um, or that's in the best interest of a student. So it's for you to say, it's not for the parents to decide, right? And you're dealing with such cases as uh, exceptional cases. It's not uh, dealt with as normal cases. Why are you so, so subjective? All right, parents have already come to terms with that. They are already prepared to accept that, even if there might be uh, stigmatization effect. All right, that would take a lot of courage and commitment on their part. And yet, still, they will not um, have the final say. It's just tough for you to consider. And you will have to consider that as a special case. Why does it have to be like that? Well, can I respond, Chairman? Mr. Lang, thank you for your question. Well, for every case, we will definitely talk to the parents. We will make it clear that uh, there are benefits uh, if they study at uh, mainstream schools and also there are merits and demerits at special schools and so on. We will certainly exchange views with the parents. We will have in-depth discussion with parents and we will seek their consent before uh, allowing the student to go to a, the, a special school. I don't know whether uh, I have misunderstood Mr. Leung. Does Mr. Leung want students who are intellectually challenged to go to special school. Why can't they be given a choice? For students intellectually challenged in our population, about 70 percent, ID about 2 percent. So if we give a choice to the parents, i.e. about 10 percent of the students may be given a choice to study in a segregated uh, environment in comparison with integration education which is now being implemented throughout the world it will be rather controversial the majority of the parents um, do make wise choices but we cannot rule out that independent parents or without fully being fully informed, may choose to place a slow learner, which can be benefited in mainstream schools, uh, to a special school, and that will affect the student. Uh, that is not acceptable. 
even in the mainstream schools, the students may have chosen a wrong school. How can you、uh, explain that? Say one should go should have gone to a band two school, but、uh, one has chosen a band one school, and one should have been to a band three school has chosen to study in a band two school. They have chosen a wrong school. Now, in the past, before there was any DDO,、uh, we can say we we couldn't say a word.、Uh, the, in the past, the mainstream schools just shut the door. Therefore, we have the DDO, and we、uh, have given the choice to the parents. That's the right to choose. If a、uh, parent. Want to send his child、uh, to a special school? You say,、uh, what if、uh, he has made a wrong choice? Well, I just find this really、uh, ridiculous. Well, we、uh, each and every professional colleague、uh, talk to talks to the parents in depth. Well, we have no objection to that, but it's about the right to choose schools. It's also based on the assessment of professionals. But in my in my in the cases in my hand, the parents, the so or rather,、uh, the social workers, the EP, the teachers, are of the view that the student will be benefited in a special school. But the EP does not approve because the IQ is just above seventy. Sorry, but if one's IQ is less than seventy, one can choose to study in a mainstream school, and the EB Education Bureau does not worry about having uh, uh, this uh, student in a mainstream school. So it's just a one-way street. You can go to a main mainstream school, but you can't go back to the special school. Well, if the professionals are willing to provide advice, we are more than happy to receive that, and not to say in-depth、uh, discussion. But it should not be a kind of compulsory arrangement. It is an advice. If the advice is in line with the wish of the parent, does the parent has the right to make a choice? You cannot just say you analyze the situation. There is in-depth discussion. Nobody is against that. The problem with you is that if the parents still want their child to go to the special school, you say no. If the answer is yes, then it will be okay. Can that be yes? I have heard your views. At present, in principle, apart from special cases, we uh, do not uh, accept those、um, IQ above seventy to study in special schools. But having heard your views, we will go back and think about it. The primary concern is to give the best to the child. And in doing, in finding out what is the best,、uh, there is professional advice. And according to professional,、uh, after、uh, hearing professional advice, it is for the parent or parents to make a choice for the child. But we also need to consider the availability of resources. If there is a sudden increase in number, um, um, we may not be able to meet all the demand. I understand members' arguments, and I personally think that the choice of the parents should be respected. But if we know that the choice is against professional advice or the advice of many professionals, then we really need to think twice about it. But if the professional advice and the parents' choice are pointing towards the same direction, I think we、uh, can do something about it. Give us some time. I'm happy to hear that. Professional advice is just advice; it's only for reference. It should not be the final decision. It seems that, according to your position, 
professional advice is final, and that is not appropriate. He is my child. I am the parent. Why can't I make a choice for my child and let the professional to decide for the whole life of my child? Now, if um, say the view is the child, um, if the parent chooses uh, to send the child to a mainstream school, even if the child is less than, uh, is having an ID, you still allow it. I think you're just throwing up a smoke screen to hide the crucial, the the, the real issue. You don't have enough. You don't have enough resources in the special schools, and you don't have enough resources in the mainstream schools. So can you draw up a blueprint how you're going to train up more professionals to help these children, whether they're occupation therapists, speech therapists, psychologists? Uh, there is a huge so shortage of them. If the parents do not get help from the government, they will have to pay a very um, expensive bill for the professional service. Do you have a blueprint to do the job well? Well, uh, perhaps um, no, we'll, we'll come back to that. I think um, other members are waiting. Um, the Vice Chairman. I thank the deputations for coming. I have been waiting, and you also have been waiting for a very long time. We re we are looking for a better answer. Mr. Leung Yu Chong has raised a very pertinent question. Just now, the Education Bureau said that the most important thing was to give the best edu education environment to the student. I agree with this statement. But you have to convince me that this is the best or this is a good education environment. We may just uh, think that this is um, a good education environment on our own, but uh, that may not ex actually be the case. You put a child in the mainstream school in a mainstream school, but you don't give adequate resources to the mainland sc mainstream school, then everybody loses, the teachers, the parents, the student, even the professional. Say, a student having emotional problem, a, an emotional problem may cause a teacher to have emotional pr uh, problems. I have seen such cases. I want to make three points. When I was a teacher, I encountered this problem, and I thought, oh, I had never thought of that. Mental disorder is not one of the category under SEN. When I was a school principal, a student was suffering from psychosis. I thought it was special education need. I didn't suddenly. I hadn't had edu edu adequate uh, training. Later, I was told that um, the student was not within the definition of SEN, and there was no additional resources for him. Uh, the HA and also EB told us, uh, gave us um, a lot of information, and we were also given. Um, Clear definitions. You explain why psychosis was not included into SEN. Good. But as a frontline teacher, when I encounter this problem, then what? We need to have interdisciplinary uh, team meeting. We need to arrange flexible timetable, flexible uh, curriculum, flexible homework, flex, uh, and also um, allowing the student to gradually run in to the um, uh, school uh, timetable. 
We need to have an, an understanding of the mental disorder. We need to have an understanding of the student, and we need to have um, suitable arrangement in teaching and in school administration. We need to do a lot in terms of policy support. There is none or next to zero. Why? There is big difference between the um, support given to SEN students vis-a-vis -vis students suffering from mental derangement. We have come across tragedies. Shouldn't we give better care to these students? Shouldn't we empower our schools to be effective in caring for these students? Academic categorization is not important. Either you put this, uh, these students under the definition of SEN. If you don't include them under the definition of SEN, uh, put them under a new category and give them support, and that's most important. Well, when I encounter such a student, I didn't know how to deal with that. Fortunately, I knew Dr. Zhang, and I called him up. But not many teachers or school principals have these resources, so they just stand there. And they are frozen, and they really don't know what to do. And uh, well, I will speak on training later. The second thing. We are teachers. If we want to do our job well, then when we face um, mental illness in uh, students or students with SEN, we care for their learning. We also need to have the knowledge to how to care for them, and we also we need training. And we also need to have room and time to deal with them. We also need professional support or other kinds of support. These four things are very important. And if they are not available, then putting the student in a certain school environment is not a good environment for the student. Whether you care for a student is the attitude of the teacher. There are variations, but the majority of the teachers do care for their students. If one doesn't care, then any other thing is meaningless. All right, assuming that the teacher is very concerned about his students, but then is there any room for him to maneuver? So uh, there is simply no way that we can put special attention to the students, in particular those with special education needs. Do we have the spare time or do we have the time to do that? Well, given the current circumstances, given the current workload, well, very often um, this might become um, an extravagant um, Expectation, all right, I'm Salang Yu Chong. Now that you've retired, now that you've stepped down, you might be able to comment a bit more on this. I think uh, for most of us who are still teaching, well, um, we simply have been um, overwhelmed by our existing workload, let alone having time to care for these students. And uh, what kind of support do we receive, whether it's some um, EPs or psychiatrists and so on, uh, and also social worker support and so on? Well, the support that we get these days is very limited. And finally, it's about our understanding, our knowledge. And if we do not have any basic understanding, then there is simply nothing that we can do. All right, we talk about uh, psychosis, and just now uh, you do have um, uh, some territory-wide training sessions, and uh, seven such workshops have been organized. Uh, I don't know how effective they have been. Well, I've also been thinking about this personally. I've uh, thought about it um, hard and long. And if you have to make sure that all teachers will understand all the uh, special education needs, the uh, special characteristics, and uh, the courses, and um, how they can be dealt with, well, none of us is as uh, knowledgeable as uh, Dr. Lau. All right, initially we have enough time, but then 
and time is now running out, so please be more precise and concise. All right. All right, I'm coming to the end. So there is no way that we can make sure that every teacher can um, uh, understand everything about um, psychosis overnight. That's why we have to have some new thinking and new mindset. And it's very simple. That is very often if a teacher is willing to understand a a, a special need. That's because uh, he's uh, he cares about that student, and uh, if that student displays the symptoms, then he'll try to know a bit more about his needs and how he can deal with him more effectively. That's why, well, for basic training, well, that's something that every teacher needs. But then, anything above that. For example, recently I went to Taiwan. I noticed that um, in Taiwan they also had integrated education. How come when I talked to those teachers that uh, they were less resistant? And how come in Hong Kong um, there is a lot more resistance? That's because uh, they were equipped uh, with the um, uh, the space and room. They have the support. And also, when there is um, a student with a special needs coming up, then the relevant professional will be there telling them what this uh, kid needs and then the teacher will listen very carefully he will learn very carefully and um, that would also uh, there would also be an interaction between the student and the teacher the student the teacher also learns along the way and uh, some teachers have also become experts along the way because uh, they uh, have had experience uh, with uh, dealing with such students, and um, I think in our case, in our case, uh, we might have uh, wasted uh, our time and efforts because uh, without such a student, uh, if you ask me to uh, uh, attend such classes or training, then I would not be very attentive. But then, uh, if I had one amongst my students, then I would be very um, attentive to that. But then the problem now is that uh, if a teacher comes across uh, a student with psychosis, then there is no convenient way for him to get hold of uh, useful information so that he will very promptly fall back to his uh, very busy daily chores and uh, he will feel very helpless and um, all he can do is to cope as far as possible. If that's the attitude, then the student uh, will um, lose the opportunity of receiving education in an appropriate environment. So, so in summary, um, well, for students uh, with psychosis, they should be given appropriate support, even w whether they are placed um, or classified as students with SEN. And number two, teachers will have to care about their students, and they have to be able to provide a better support for their students. And in terms of training, that's point number three that I was talking about, and that's the new approach for training. So that's about uh, the development of our knowledge, and uh, we will have to be more targeted. We will have to do that uh, in a more targeted manner, and therefore, in terms of the support provided by the central authorities, we will have to look at uh, the uh, learning and work of the teachers, and that will have to be done in tandem. All right, uh, that's uh, really very impressive. All right, I think. Uh, the deputy chairman was expressing his views. Um, all right, um, uh, time, um, space, and professional training. But then there are several points that we have covered. But then before we conclude, well, for the deputations who are here, all right, you have also listened to our discussion and also the administration's response. And if you have a simple uh, remarks to make. Then um, I'm talking about two minutes response. If you would, if you like to uh, say something, then please feel free to do so. Yes, Miss Wong, uh, Miss Miss Fong from the PTU. Well, I believe that uh, there are there is there are simply too few special schools. That's why we have the situation whereby mainstream school students would like to get back to special schools and they are not able to do so. Our administration is a responsible one. Then we should uh, put the students' uh, interests uh, as our top priority, instead of uh, resource implications. We should also give the teachers more space to pursue further training, instead of um, uh, requiring them to undergo training while they are taking care of um, their very heavy workload. And also, um, there aren't that 
many resources available to the teachers. So you, if you just uh, put the blame on the teachers, saying that uh, they are too busy, they are not willing to pursue uh, training and so on, that's not fair to them. I think uh, for teachers um, with um, uh, such students, uh, they should have more uh, spare classes so that they can attend meetings and so on. All right, we have discussed that uh, for quite some time, and then um, there are some major concerns. Number one, psychosis or mental illness. From what I've heard, including my personal view, I think that should be um, included as part of integrated education. So that should be classified as uh, one of the special education needs. Just now, Dr. Cheung also talked about uh, the stigmatization effect. That's something that we have to bear in mind. Well, I think psychosis or mental illness in itself is already a label. And uh, if SEN is a stigmatization, then I think it's a lot uh, less serious than psychosis. And if you classify that as an SEN, it's not something that you have to reveal to others. I think the most important uh, effect is that uh, the school will be able to get additional resources, and those resources could be used um, on the student with psychosis so that uh, he can get more professional support. If there is a need for small group training, then he'll have greater chances of getting that. And if he does not have that status, then he will simply not get that sort of support. Just now, the Education Bureau said a number of things. All right, in exceptional circumstances, in exceptional cases, additional resources will be given. And if you do have such examples, then please give us the figures. Please give us some examples. Out of the um, large number of uh, primary and secondary schools, how many students with psychosis have been given that exceptional support? Just now, you also said that uh, you had uh, cross uh, or multidisciplinary meetings, uh, so the schools, uh, teachers, uh, social workers, and also even the EC centers, medical staff will meet with the student or will look at the needs of the student concern so that uh, a case conference will be held. I'd like to know, for this kind of multidisciplinary meetings or conferences, so you talk about 130 plus students with such problems. So how many of them have received such treatment? Does it mean that uh, all the 130 students have managed to have such meetings held uh, on them, or is just uh, 13 of them? Should every student be entitled to such case conferences with multidisciplinary involvement? And finally, is about uh, the right to choose schools. I think it's a big problem, whether it's because of their IQ or it's because uh, they have psychosis. Just now, you talk about mental illness, and also um, they are very different from students with SENs. Of course, um, I'm not an expert uh, on that. I don't know if Dr. Chong is a specialist uh, on this, but then if you look at uh, hyperactivity disorder, they also have to take medication. So their situation would not be much different uh, from um, other fellow students uh, with mental disorder. So on what basis are you differentiating them from other students with SEN, and as a result, they are not eligible for additional support? So I think uh, going back to the issue of uh, the right to choose schools, I think you will have to deal with this very seriously. Just now, the Under Secretary said that you had an op you had an open mind. You'll be prepared to take a second look into this. On the one hand, you'd like to respect the choice of the parents, but then you would also have to respect the comments by the professionals. You'd like to see if there is any further room for maneuvering. I think that's very important because uh, in some cases, uh, a child has been assessed uh, to have an IQ of 71, but then he has tremendous difficulty catching up in the mainstream school, and yet he is denied. Uh, admission to special schools, even though everybody um, agrees that uh, he should go to a special school. So that's a problem. All right, summarizing the 
three points that I just made. Would you be Would you like to make a response? And also, with regard to the uh, multidisciplinary meetings, do you have the figures with you? On the figures, well, we'll supply that um, after the meeting. On mental disorder or psychosis, should that be classified as um, an SEN? Our current view is, as I've explained, and Dr. Chong has also explained. At the end of the day, all we are trying to do is, as the chair and deputy chair just said, whatever name we call it, is about the administration's uh, support for these students. Is it adequate or not? So that's the most important question. Well, as Dr. Lau just explained, well, for students with psychosis or mental disorder, the general approach or the services that we provide, well, she has already explained the details. All right, we have heard the comments by the deputations and members. We'll go back and think about them. With regard to with regard to the right to choose schools, well, I don't think I need to repeat the points that I've made already. The most important thing is the interest of the child, which is the best for him. So professional advice and parents' choice between these two, how do we strike a balance? And as I just said, well, resource implications would be one of our considerations because if all of a sudden we change that policy, then resource-wise, uh, is it affordable? So that's something that we have to think about. But then we will go back and think about it. We have heard your views. We can also see that um, um, there are some understandable factors to be considered. So we'll go back and think about it. And uh, for the figures, if you do not have them with you, can you supply them later? On the number of uh, multidisciplinary case conferences. All right, we'll try. Uh, we'll go back and see if we can find that. We'll try to provide you with some useful figures. And also, all right, uh, you talk about 130 plus cases is um, exceptionally low. I believe that um, well, for the easy centers under the H A, you're talking about uh, thousands of uh, such cases. Well, for the 130 plus cases, that's a figure reported uh, by the schools. And of course, after consulting the doctors, uh, would they be informing the schools concerned? Huh? Well, it's not um, appropriate for us to approach the H A asking for um, all the information. It's not about uh, whether or not uh, it's appropriate. I think we should be looking at the best interest of a student, and that should be the guiding principle. And if they have mental disorder, if they have psychosis, and if they have been diagnosed um, and treated uh, by the HA, and if they have to go back to the schools and uh, to readapt into school life and undergo integrated education, there is no possibility that uh, the HA does not talk to the schools concerned. If there is zero communication between the HA and the school, and it's not about the privacy of the student concerned. It's about uh, having uh, multidisciplinary support for the student. There is no reason why, just uh, because of the students, um, uh, just because of concern for the students' uh, privacy, you do not talk to the schools concerned. Definitely, there has to be communication between the HA and the school. It's not uh, something very passive. It's not that uh, if the situation is very serious and if uh, something untoward happens and then the parents approach you uh, directly, then you will talk to them. I think there should be an established uh, communication mechanism or channel. You will have to do it anyway, but then of course you will have to get the consent of the parents concerned. Only then is a reasonable service arrangement. Chairman, I agree that we will have to get the consent of the parents uh, or the children or the, or the or the student if he's um, below eighteen before um, the information is disclosed to the relevant parties. So I defer to Dr. Chung. Uh, thank you. Well, Chairman, your question is a very real one. Indeed, we have to look at this. All right, we don't have the figures with us. There you go. Yes, yes. Concerning the number of students, we don't have the figure in hand, but I will go back and look at it, see if I can get a sort of such information. 
it is worth considering. And if there is a big difference with the number of the Education Bureau, which are 130 or so, um, then something has to be done. Now, we do liaise with the schools, and we try to find out why there is a big difference, if any. Yes, please, go back and check. Find out the difference and find out the reason, reasons for the big difference, and then provide us with further information. Okay. Well then, without if there is no AOB, then we uh, call it a day. The education panel will have a meeting on the tenth of October. This is the first meeting in the new session, and I hope, uh, and I hope that the panel will allow this subcommittee to continue in the new session. And the next meeting will be arranged by the secretary. Thank you.